Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to another Ego Insights. And this one is quite a special one. To be very honest, this is one that we've been looking very much forward to, haven't we, Charlotte? Yes, very much so. It's a little bit different to, uh, I suppose, our, our normal cybersecurity events. Yeah. I'm really curious to see. I see like a lot of people already in the room. Can you just can you pop us a quick message in the chat where you are? Just just curious to see where we got people from because like we're from all over the world. I'm in Mallorca. Where are you, Charlotte? I'm in Toulouse. Toulouse, Mike. Uh, I'm in the southwest of the uh, of England in the UK. And Cameron. I'm in London. London. And Paul, where are you? I'm in sunny Fort Lauderdale, Florida. See, we're from all over the world. We see, oh, Norma. Oh, lovely Norma. So good to see you. And then we've got Chris from the Isle of Man. We've got Bulgaria. Oh, my God. Other people are just popping all the information. And I think this is cool, and this is a good start. But we, for today, have joined forces with the CS Platinum and the International Yard Broker Association, together with Dark Place, to... Because this is a big topic, cybersecurity, and um, we want to provide you with a bit of a different perspective. Because, and we've done quite a few sessions, and we tried to do this one different. It's going to be so different. It's going to be. I mean, this is going to get an Oscar. This recording is going to get an Oscar. You're going to be introduced to some characters today, and um, and the fun part is part of cybersecurity is you, and we all of you sharing where you're from. This is exactly what we wanted to see, the vulnerability of the information sharing that we have all around us. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah? Um, it's something that's around us, something we can't ignore. It's something that's with us every day. And cybersecurity is a basic life skill at the moment. And today, we're going to show you through a series of videos how a cyber criminal can quite easily manipulate a situation. We call it under the radar. And uh, because, like, yeah, it's not easily seen. And uh, but before we start, I want to introduce our key players of today. So we've got with me my co-host, Charlotte Riley. Welcome, Charlotte. Thank you, Arno. Yeah. So quick introduction, I suppose, um, about me. I'm Charlotte Riley. I'm the um, the chief technical officer of CSS Platinum. I look after all of our technical services. Um, I look after our clients, um, our product development, um, and generally go about keeping our clients safe, um, whichever industry they belong to. Yeah. Thank you, Charlotte. And uh, with, with us as well, uh, Mr. Paul Flenny from the IYBA. Paul, well, you just went to, to a yacht, so we're all very jealous. How are you? Um, well, thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Paul Flannery. I'm executive director of the International Yacht Brokers Association. Uh, we're based here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, uh, 1,600 members worldwide. Uh, the, ma the majority of our membership is here in the United States, but we've enjoyed great inroads into the European marketplace over the last couple of years. Uh, the purpose of IYBA is to promote professionalism and cooperation in the yacht sales industry. We do so through education, networking, and the removal of barriers to commerce. Uh, education is critically important to us. As you guys know, uh, Mike and Charlotte have helped me with a couple of seminars and webinars that we've done in the past, and I'm really happy to be able to contribute to this event today. And who are you playing today, Mr. Flannery? Oh, I'm playing Mr. Flannery, but I think there's a guy who looks a little bit like me who may show up on screen. You'll, you'll know when you see him. <laughs> we'll, know when I, we'll know when we see him. Eh? And <laughs> Cameron, welcome as well. Um, uh, Cameron Spence from Dark Place, welcome to us. Can you give us a short introduction? You have to unmute yourself there, Cameron. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. That's the, the classic, I think, 2020 speaking on mute. Um, but yeah, I'm the, the representative from, um, from Dark Trace. And I suppose what you need to know about Dark Trace is we essentially pioneered the approach of using artificial intelligence for, for cybersecurity. And that's ultimately where, where my knowledge base, um, base lies. And Dark Trace is a, a company that's grown massively in the last five or six years. We've got over 5,000 customers using the technology, which we are hoping to, well, helping to keep safe. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that introduction. And last but certainly not least, Mike Willis. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Arno. Hi, Mike Wills here. I'm one of the co-founders at CSS Platinum. I'm the, uh, the chief data officer, which means alongside Charlotte, I, I do a lot of the work on the policy side in terms of making sure that we are helping to keep everyone safe, but also providing the thought leadership to the super yacht industry as well. 
Um, and I may or may not be making a cameo appearance. In this, <laughs> as we go this through. We'll see. We'll see. Again, a lot of people from everywhere. I've seen the UK. I've seen Europe. I've seen the US. I mean, there's so many people. And uh, um, you made a great comment just earlier, uh, Norma. So good to see so many professionals um, here for this webinar. That means that it's important. Thank you for noticing. Um, well, what are we doing today, Charlotte? So we, we very specifically um, wanted to show people what a cyber um, attack actually looks like. I think we see it in the news all the time. You know, a, a huge cyber attack has happened, um, millions lost, fines, this, that, and the other. But I, I don't think it's actually clear the scope, the breadth, um, and everything that happens really um, in, in that attack and from the cyber criminal's point of view. Um, and although a cyber attack can affect any industry, we, we wanted to um, tailor it and, and make it apparent how it could affect the, the yacht industry in particular. So um, we're hoping, uh, you know, it's of interest. And, and we, as we move through, we'd like to provide some hints and tips on how you can keep yourself safe. Yeah, because that's what we're doing today. We're basically going to show you some videos to see, to really guide you through one of those attacks. We're going to give you tips and hints. We're going to end up with the panel together with Paul, Mike, and Cameron. But any questions in the meantime, please just get that chat going and ask any questions because I, my first question is like, it's nice to talk about cybersecurity. And I know I was, I've been a for a while, but like, the question is, is this really happening, Charlotte? Is this something that's real? Or is this something that like, let's say the millennium bug, something that never happens? Right, well, so we, we get asked, we get asked that all of the time um, by clients, industry members, everybody. And um, unfortunately the, the response is yes. Um, Particularly um, for, for our yacht clients, um, people don't talk about it. So it, it's if an incident happens, the first thing people do is go into damage control mode. So they don't talk about it. They don't advertise it. A few a few people you've noticed maybe recently in the news um, have stuck their hands up and, and talked about what what has happened to, to help their peers, to help their community. Um, but but in the main, it's happening. But people don't want to talk about it. They don't, they don't want to say they've lost a bunch of money or lost client data. Um, so, yes, it's happening and you need to be prepared, um, properly prepared to make sure it doesn't happen to you. Well, let's meet our cyber villain. Yeah? And our cyber villain is called Cyber McNasty. And he's basically the arch nemesis of Captain Baba. So you, and, and let's see. The first step is let's see how he finds and chooses his target. And, guys, you'll recognize this. It's going to be an eye opener. And... Um, Guys, let's mute ourselves, the ones in the panel and the presenters, so I can play the first part of Cyber McNasty. Ah, hello. My name is Cyber McNasty. You don't know me, but in the very near future, I am going to get to know you a whole lot better. Because I'm a hacker and I make my living through targeting people like you and the yachts that you work on and the businesses that support them. And I'm not alone. There are many people like me watching, waiting, targeting you every minute of every day. Here's the thing. I only need to be lucky once, whereas you need to be lucky every single day time but you're going to learn all about this in the very near future so till we meet again bye bye so that was quite eye opener so charlotte tell me how many cyber nazis are there in the world and you have to unmute yourself sorry just getting used to this platform um so really an untold amount because many of them don't get caught um they, they they work in the shadows um they it can be anything from organized crime um state-sponsored um attacks you know to people just taking pot shots um and, and essentially as as mr mcnasty says he only has to be lucky once um and he has an array of targets especially in this industry that they're, they're sat there in the marina they're very obvious 
um, that there's quite apparent wealth and, and they do present quite an attractive range of, of, of targets um, for would-be hackers to go after. Good. And, and like, so we're, so the first step what we're going to look at is that he's going to do a social engineering attack, right? And that's how easy it is to, and just for the, for the people who are like uh, as knowledgeable as I am, what's the definition of a social engineering attack, uh, Charlotte? It's basically just using any any information that can be gleaned on an individual, so personal information, um, to, to to manipulate somebody, manipulate them into giving you some that that little thing that will allow a cyber attack to happen, to to allow them to steal some money, to get your credentials. So it's it's using all that information that's out there in the world on um, social platforms, social media. Um, to, to tailor an attack just for you, so you're the person that lets them in the door. Okay, let's so we have a look how uh, McNasty is going to do his uh, social engineering attack. Next video, we're going to mute ourselves again and uh, watch this, guys. Don't forget to respond on the chat. Any questions? Any comments? And not the comments on how amazing Paul looks in the, uh, Mike looks in this video, but like more <laughs> about the cyber security. Let's go. Mike McNasty, social engineering attack. Today's a nasty day. I've just got back from the marina, in Monaco. There's a new yacht sat there, just waiting for me to get to know it a little bit better. And their crew were all around it in their polo shirts with their names emblazoned all over it, which is just so useful. So, let's make some friends with some people, shall we? Right, Instagram. My old friend. Let's see who we can find. I love Instagram. People just love putting pictures of themselves on there and more information you could possibly imagine. Right, what's out there? Super Yacht CSS Platinum 13 posts. Oh look, there you are. In the harbour, marina in Monaco. Some trips around the world. Who's that fella? Can't really tell. Ah, who's this? Henry Questionable. Hello Henry. Let's find out a little bit more about you. International traveller, influencer, and party animal. Huh, Henry, you sound like a guy I need to get to know. Oh, look, you've put your email address on there. That is very, very useful. All right, Henry, oh, look, you like a bit of fishing. Well, my old China, I think it's about time that you and I got to know each other a little bit better. Right then, Henry, Henners, let's find out whether you've been hacked. Right, let's put your email address into Have I Been Pawned. I love Have I Been Pawned. Just so useful. Right, Henry Questionable at gmail.com. Have you been pawned? Fingers crossed. Six data breaches, jackpot. Cyto day. Let's have a look at this. Compromised data, email addresses, and password. Right, let's go there. Cyto day breach collection. Down we go. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. The first folder has 14,006. Right, well, let's open that then. Cyto day open. What have we got? There we go, let's have a look. Ah, oh, look, there you are, Henry Crashnerville at gmail.com. Oh, Henry Hennis, you don't disappoint. Hang on, what's that? Crashable Henry at superyachtcssplatinum.com and a password. Book bag exclamation one. You clearly like your sports. Well, Henry, you might have more time for sports by the time I finish with you. See you soon. Henry, 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 you truly are a very useful guy to know. Not only did I find your password for your Gmail account in that data breach, but I also found that it was the email password for your Super Yacht CSS Platinum account. 
And not only that, I found a whole host of other associated personal data that could be very useful to me in the future. Passport number, other emails, other passwords, IP addresses. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into your Superyacht CSS Platinum email account and have a good old look round. Find out what you're up to, where the yacht's going, who else you know, maybe the captain, and then I'm going to make friends with them. See you soon. That was like, come on, Charlie, is it really that easy? I mean, it, it can be. If we aren't diligent, diligent about the information we put online, make available to other people, then it, it really takes an interested party just to piece all of those um, little snippets of information together to, to create a full story um, and potentially target you. So um, in terms of, you know, some hints and tips as an individual, be diligent about what you put online. Be aware of your digital footprint. Um, you use different passwords across different platforms, especially those that are very sensitive, like your bank account, your credit card information, your, your, your passport, that sort of thing. Uh, make sure your privacy settings are appropriate on social media. Just just be aware, aware of what's going on and the risks that you're presenting to yourself. Right, and that's just so from the crew perspective. Like, but like, if if I'm an employer, captain, management company, what, like, what can I do? If we think about it from um, from well, from the, from the yacht itself, there's um, a safety, security, and data issue there. Um, from from the rest of the community. You know, we're definitely talking about data, um, client, client information, invoices. Um, so generally, you, you need to make sure your employees are trained, whether they be crew or um, onshore employees um, working in an office. They need to be cyber aware um, and that needs to be regular and it needs to be um, in, in line with the risk that's, that's prevalent at the moment. Um, and you might want to understand who your employees are. Do, do they... Do they internally pose a risk? Um, do you know what their backgrounds are? What um, what their social media activity is like and digital footprint? So it's just generally about understanding where you are vulnerable. Got it. So, and this is like, um, that's also like while, we guys, while we're working together, right? Because we want to make the industry aware of what is happening and, and with all the new regulations that are in place in the IMO, it, I think it's becoming more and more important. But I also believe that, like, uh, when we're looking at the human factor at the moment, and and to understand where we're vulnerable as a human being, and well, what what is he going to do next? Do you think, uh, Charlie? What's what's the next phase of what we're watching? What is he up to? I think he's got all this information. Um, now he has a way in. He has a target. He has a way in. And I think he's going to go after some money. At the end of the day, that's what um, cyber criminals want. They want. Um, they use cyber attacks to get their ill-gotten gains the same way any other criminal does. Good. Well, shall we have a look on what, like, what the next phase is of cyber nasty? And um, Mike just pointed out we might have a little bit of a delay. I hope it's on. I, I checked on the other side. We should be fine. Hopefully it is. Don't forget that we're recording this whole session, so it will be available online afterwards. If we feel that anything of the video is missed, we'll just edit in the full video. So even if you look back later, it will be fine, just for the audience to be sure that, we don't, that you don't miss out on anything. Mr. Flannery... Is this like your moment of glory is coming up, right? Oh, if you yeah. say so. If say so. <laughs> like, do we need to do we need to introduce? Do we need to make sure that the audience understands that it's not really you? It's like your it's your alter ego, the, the bad side of you. Well, let's just say I'm one of many children in my family, and uh, there's there bears quite a resemblance amongst several of us. Oh, no, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to interrupt with just a quick question. Because, yes, of course. you know, while I'm a panelist here and I'm, and I'm really honored to be here, um, I'm also not a cybersecurity expert. I'm a consumer. I'm a, I'm a regular Joe who walks down the street. And while I'm listening to um, my, our, my friend, Mr. McNasty, and uh, while I'm listening to Charlotte, the thing that occurs to me is, I, I don't have time to go on to have I been pawned right now because as tempted as I am, like the rest of the audience, I'm on here with the camera going. So yeah. here's my big question. 
what do I do? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a person that lives in the public. I've got bank accounts, credit card accounts, email addresses. I have, uh, you know, payment accounts for my insurance on my car or my house or my mortgage. You know, I've got all these things. And one of the great things about the 21st century is the convenience of having things paid automatically and the ability to have things done online. I don't have to sit down once every month and write out 15 different checks and go to the post office. and I can do all that stuff online. But I can't remember 73 different passwords. Well, this is a fair question. What, what does one practically do, uh, Mike or Charlotte? W what does a person do to keep some level of security in parallel with some level of sanity? Yeah. Do you want to take this one back just for a change? Say that one more time. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what I would say, Paul, and it's, a, and it's a great question because, do you know what, if you turn around to the average person and said, look, you need to have a different password to every single account that they use, they would yawn at you and go, you've got to be joking, switch off and say, no, it's fine, I'll be okay, um, a lot of the time. Uh, and I have that problem with my children trying to get them, you know, teenage boys to, to, to do the right thing. Um, so what, what I would suggest is, is um, you should have different passwords because it means you're minimizing the risk to you. So how do you remember that? Uh, password keepers is a solution that we would, we would recommend you. There's a lot of them on the market. Um, if you can uh, Google it, if you go to a credible commentator um, within the security or the IT space, they'll tend to tell you what are the, the good options out there. Um, and then what you tend to use then is one master password, um, which you can remember, and then all other passwords can be kept within that. When it comes to choosing a password, don't be obvious. You know, be slightly fun, you know, have a look at the surroundings around you and, and maybe come up with a phrase or three random words or something different, which um, would not be uniform. That's a, a clever system and algorithm could potentially work through or, you know, password one, two, three, for instance, which, you know, people do because they think it's easy or QWERTY or something like that, that, that the systems and machines might be able to break really, really easily. So just... Try and be random as possible. Use numbers, use exclamation marks, and put them in a password keeper, and, and, and they're, they're, they're good. Charlotte, would you add anything to that? I, I was just going to say, um, you know, to, to be practical, think about the, the things that are really going to cause you damage. So your credit reports, anywhere where your social security number lives, um, your bank account, that type of thing, and make sure they're ad adequate, adequately protected. Um, and if you do find that you have been in data breach, definitely don't use that password. Um, if you're a high profile person, um, somewhat a senior person in an organization, a board member, um, you know, th there are ways of doing digital footprints. We have one, we call it crew check specifically this, on, for, for this industry for looking at background reports of, of crew, but it, it really is a, a digital footprint um, to show any individual what Basically, a perpetrator, uh, someone who was trying to socially engineer you could see um, from, from the outside what they would do to, to look at your profile, what they would see on the dark web. Um, so that's that's something to consider. So I'm, 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 using, I'm using Secure Safe for myself. And, but like, and maybe is there any one that you recommend to uh, top of mind, Mike? Because I think it's going to have to like downloads on the Apple Store and Google Play Store from now. Now you have to unmute yourself, Paul, please. Uh, uh, Mike, sorry. I, I wish I had a referral code now, but that would be a bit off. Uh, no, so I, I personally use Dashlane is the account, that I, but there's other ones, Charlotte. Um, there's one pass, I think. Some some uh, VPN providers now start to provide additional functions. And again, a lot of the um, antivirus providers, Norton, uh, Bitdefender, McAfee, Kapersky, all of that stuff. Are starting to yeah. And I've yeah. got the best one. I've got a list that I put in my wallet. That's what you tell everyone on it. You'll be mugged on the street <laughs> before you know. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a Chris Stewart has got an interesting question. Is increased biometrics inevitable? Anybody wants to would like to comment on that? I think, yes, um, as, as they become more um, common, uh, as in, um, your, you know, your technology is supporting it now. So, every, every, you know, your phones have a, a, um, a fingerprint reader. Um, you could probably do retina scanners now. So I, I think that would be an obvious way, you know, that there's something I have um, is, is an easy way to protect yourself unless we get, you know, Terminator style and people start stealing people's eyeballs. But hopefully that won't happen.
And Chris, I mean, just to add to that, I think it is inevitable. You know, one thing that COVID has, has brought along is the fact that you can't do face recognition if you've got a mask across half your face. And how many people do you see pulling them down or lifting it up? So, you know, I know on the Apple roadmap at the moment, they're looking at how, how can you log into your, your iPhones using, you know, retina and eye recognition to take account for the fact that you have face masks for COVID. So I think it is uh, inevitable. Um, I still think that, you know, there is inherent weakness in it. If you, if you, God forbid, were accosted by by somebody who wanted to get into your phone in, in a mugging or something like that, if, if if you're there, you can still have your phone print manipulated or your face manipulated or or, or something like that. And more not factor though. You do you do yeah. the password and then you do um, the biometrics, and that's why it's multi factor rather than two factor. You're using different kinds of of authentication. Um, to 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 gain access and that way you're um, you have the extra protection. Just to keep the speed up a little bit because we're also dealing with an audience that have got a attention span of fifteen minutes. So let's see what Cyber McNasty is up next. Let's see at the next phase. Um, alter ego of Paul Flannery coming in play now. So again, ladies and gentlemen, be prepared. Please mute yourselves and here we. Right then, Henry. It's time to have a good old look around inside your Super Yacht CSS Platinum email account. In we go. Right. Microsoft 365 login. Sign in. Put in your email address. And then your password. Footbag with a capital F, exclamation mark one. Oh, Henry, thank you. You haven't put in place two-factor authentication. Right, and we are busy in inbox. Right, who can we see? Scroll down. Look, Captain Bubba, surely not. Yes, Captain Bubba, you're the captain of CSS Platinum Super Yacht. Oh, this is my inn. I smell a payday. Right, how to target you? I think it's time to go fishing. Email fishing. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time putting together a really credible email. He's a busy guy. I'm pretty sure he's gonna fall for it. So, Captain Bubba, very soon, you and I are gonna to get to know each other a whole lot better. See you soon. I got me some Wi-Fi right here, and you don't even have to do that sign-in thing. Very cool. All right, let me check them emails real quick. Oh, Lee, I got so much stuff to do trying to get ready for this trip tomorrow. My boss wants to travel. I got to get fuel. What the heck? Change my password. Oh, Lord. Let me change it. All right. New password. Mr. Wonderful. I'll just make it Mr. Wonderful 2 this time. Make it easy that way. I'll work for you. All right, and now got that done. Got that done. And fueling instructions. Let me tell the management company to go ahead and order fuel. Please order fuel for the boat. We're parting tomorrow. Boss won't make up his mind where. Need full tanks. Send that. I gotta get out here to the boat show. Boss wants to do boat. Try to get with Daisy later on. Alrighty, busy. It worked. Captain Bubba. I knew you'd fall for it. So, thanks to you, I'm now in your email account. And I've had a good look around for an opportunity that we can work on together. And lo and behold, the yacht's being refueled. And the yacht management company has emailed you telling you that they're expecting the invoice for it. So here's what's gonna happen. When the fueling company sends the invoice to you, I'm gonna be waiting. And you won't even know. And I'm gonna take that email and I'm going to change the bank account details to yours truly. 
and then I'll send it to the yacht management company and they're going to pay me. I told you there was a payday coming. Oh, and do you know what? You're just a really useful guy, Captain Bubs. So then I think you're worth spending a little bit more time with. And I'm going to try and work out what else we can do together. Perhaps you can help me get aboard the network of CSS Platinum. We shall see. See you soon. All right. Darn, there's a bunch of boats in that show. I hope that broker done sent that stuff off. Let me just check my emails real quick before I head on home. Daisy is waiting for me last night in town, boy. It's going to be a good one. Wonder why I ain't got no numbers on my email. Wonder why I ain't got no emails. Well, the heck with it. I'm going to head on home. I got things to do. See ya. Hello? Hello? What the hell's wrong with this thing? It's going crazy on me. Hello? Yeah? Yeah, this count bubble? Fuel? Well, yeah, you filled it up. What do you mean you ain't been paid? You ain't been paid for the fuel? I, I told the management company yesterday, pay you for the fuel. I sent them an email. Yeah, you're going to have to check with them. I'm already on my way. Yeah, no, they'll pay you. Don't you worry about a thing. All right, see ya. Bye. <laughs> I'm on my way. I ain't got nothing to worry about. See ya. There's a lot of damage that has been inflicted by Charlotte and um, especially by little, quite little efforts. Um, what could we have done differently? So if we think about what, what happened there, imagine that was um, an Office 365 account um, where... That there wasn't multi-factor or two-factor authentication on on the account. Um, so he's he's got on the password and straight from the internet he's, he's logged in. Um, he takes over that account. He puts some rules on there. So um, no more, you know, no no more um, emails go to that account. You don't get alerted to to anything nefarious going on. You go about your day, and in the meantime, he's um, he's seen everything that's going on. He's identified a target, as in this this fueling invoice. And very easily sent sent that out the door and, and asked for it to be paid. Um, so that that's one thing: password policy, multi-factor authentication. Um, coming coming back to training. So those things you can do. Those are things you can do to protect yourself in in quite a simple manner. Um, and uh, the other thing you want to lean on is a way of identifying these types of things happening. That's a little bit more complicated, um, and a way to respond to them. And that's where we start to lean on technology. Um, to do the things that we can't um, at the end of the day. We're not just dealing with attackers who um, are doing all of this manually. They have programs. They have AI themselves um, that can can do this on many, many targets across the Internet. So we want to be able to respond in kind. Um, so that, that's where we, we, we move on to the next video, I think, or for you to introduce it. Okay, because like we're, we're basically now going to... to um... A, a more solution based, right? We're going to look at like um, the whole social engineering and um, more like a solution, correct? Yeah, so um, artificial intelligence technology, we thought it'd be interesting. Uh, another, that's another term that's batted a, around, um, you know, cyber attacks, artificial intelligence. What is that? How does it work? How does it help us with, with this problem? How does it provide a solution? So we, we wanted to showcase um, um, well, our, um, AI platform powered by Darktrace, which is um, an AI technology. Um, Cameron will tell us more about it, but born out of a group of mathematicians from Cambridge University mm -hmm. and security experts at GCHQ, which is um, you can you can compare it to the NSA in, in the US. So it's um, okay. yeah, um, I, th I think it'd be quite good for us to look at it. And th this this particular um, element of it, we're going to look at two parts, is going to protect the the mail infrastructure. Um, and identify what happens normally um, between in, in a male environment, how people talk to each other, identify styles, um, a pattern of life, mm -hmm. and look at something bad going on and stop it, essentially, in very simple terms. So I'm, I'm sure Cameron will tell us more. Yeah. It's quite technical, this, this small video, but it's very interesting. Have a look, you'll be like, it's quite scary. You'll be surprised on what you see there. And Cameron, maybe you would like to comment a little bit together with Charlotte on it afterwards, but it's like, it's, it's, 
crazy. So I'll mute myself again and play this one. And uh, yeah. And Ellison says, now I understand why two-factor authentication is important as well. <laughs> That's good. We, 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 we convinced one person at least today. It's worth the extra code. <laughs> it's worth the code. Here we go. Anti-unit email gives us full visibility of everything that's happening within the vessel's email inboxes. We can see alongside a number of key metrics, the 50 most at-risk email inboxes on the vessel. Crucially, we can see that Angela Darling, the ship's captain, is the most at risk. On the right-hand side, we can see all of the emails that Anti-unit has taken action on, and we can click into them further to find out why. This is particularly interesting in the case of Ben Smith. Ben and Angela are in constant contact and he is a known correspondent. However, anti Gina email has given this a 96% threat score and held the email back from Angela's inbox because it believes there to be an account hijack, a behavioral anomaly and a suspicious link. What anti Gina email has seen is that Ben has asked Angela to input her sign in details into this Microsoft link. The reason Antigeno has taken action here is because in the wider relationship with Ben and Angela, he has never asked her to input a sign in details into any link before. So this is an example of a very sophisticated phishing attack, which Antigeno email has spotted and taken action on because we have spotted the unusual behavior coming from Ben's email inbox. Antigeno email works by looking at the wider relationship and understanding the context does this email belong in the email inbox? Does this email belong in the email inbox? That with that sentence, Cameron, that scared the living out of me, to be honest. <laughs> so um, it's, quite, it's quite fascinating that that part that that part of um, the solution because it it doesn't just look, um, I, I suppose, for. Um, where the emails come from, who it's going to, it, it actually looks at the style of writing. So where it, it spotted the phishing attack, because that's never happened before, and it's, they'd never been asked to put those um, credentials in. But also when McNasty wrote that email to the management company, it would have spotted that that's not the language that usually happens, or that's usually used, that, that, um, that's, that they've never asked for invoice changes before and would have prevented that um, from being delivered and therefore stops the 100K being paid by the management company. Wow. So how long did it take to develop this camera? I mean, the, the, the core um, algorithms that Darktrace uses have been in, in the works for eight, nine years. Wow. And it's essentially an extension of that technology that's branched out into the, the Antigena email console. And it's, I mean, the, the mathematicians that, that, that use it are incredibly, are in, incredibly intelligent there's something like 30 phds at dark trace whose entire life essentially revolves around creating these algorithms that understand what's normal within a vessel's in infrastructure and then by understanding the normal we can then detect the unusual behavior and that's how we detect the threats Great. but they don't get right to christmas parties probably yeah <laughs> no they don't. well that's the thing right but this is only part one we saw how he to social engineering mcnasty stole money right? and that like I guess his next move is to get into the network. And so, Charlie, what would he be targeting in this next phase of his attack? This is where things get more complicated um, because a lot of cyber attacks that, that happen, they're undetected. Uh, that you've, you've got a perpetrator in your network, in your systems, you have no idea. They're just, they're just looking, watching, waiting, and then um, you'll know when they decide that they want you to know, when they want something from you. So um, th they could be going after just data theft, stealing your your, um, your owner's data. Remember, we've got connectivity to probably home premises, business premises. They could be um, looking to um, infect the systems with ransomware to say, unless you pay me, I will not let you use these systems. Yeah. Um, worse, they could be into the, the your operational systems. Um, that's the more extreme side of things, but potentially say you cannot move this vessel unless you pay me. They, you know, these are scenario based, but um, it, it could happen. Hard to detect, hard to respond to. And that's why we, again, we, we use UI, UI AI to, um, to understand what's going on and autonomously respond. So, uh, you know, the AI stops it happening without an, an internet connection. 
um, until you can be in a, a, the right place with the right expertise to deal with the situation. Because vessels, and Paul, I think you can help me there, are more and more computerized. So it means that they are more and more at risk. What do you think, Paul, on that? I mean, well, obviously. that's absolutely true. I mean, throughout throughout all machinery, whether it's uh, boats, airplanes, cars, you know, there's more connectivity every single day. Uh, you hear of hacks from, um, from the airlines up through the monitoring systems on Rolls-Royce engines. Um, you, you see, uh, you, you, we hear stories of uh, people spoofing GPS signals uh, and getting into, getting into the boat and having the boat running on its autopilot by the GPS, but they spoof the GPS signal. So the boat goes off course and it goes to someplace that the captain wasn't intending it to go to where it's more vulnerable. So through, through today's technology, there's so much more connectivity. Uh, you know, I don't know any of the depth of this stuff like our, our other three panelists do, oh no, but uh, it just, the more you think about it, the more connectivity you realize there is, which each and every one of those points of connectivity, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they offer liabilities, vulnerabilities, and places that McNasty can just roll in the roll in the mud and 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 go, you know, run roughshod over top of Bubba and uh, and and his ilk. Okay. Let's have a look. Like let's have a look what he's up to now because I think we're going back to Simon McNasty. I think he is about to infiltrate the network. So we're going to mute ourselves again. And we're going to see what McNasty is up in his, in his last part of his uh, performance. I'm back. And I've just had a $100,000 payday. Superyacht CSS Platinum, you appear to be the gift that keeps on giving. And so I'm going to take a little bit of time away from my other targets and spend a bit more time with you. I want this to go to the next level. I am going to get myself onto your network so I can see who's coming aboard and who's joining. And then I'll be able to make friends with them too. The question is how to do it. Well, Captain Bubba is understandably a little bit sensitive to emails at the moment. So I need someone else. Henry, it's time for you and I to spend some more quality time together. So I'm going to be sending you a fishing email. You like fishing, and it's going to be the biggest fish you catch all year. Because when you click on that link, which I know you will, I'm going to be on the network, and I'm going to be watching. So until then, bye-bye. I mean, Henry, Hedders, you never disappoint. So, Super Yacht CSS Platinum, I am now sat on your network. And that means that I can see anybody that joins. I can connect to their devices and make friends with them. And what's really exciting is that I know that it won't be long until the owner comes aboard and some of his friends or guests and I'll be able to make friends with them too. So, as I've already said, you really are the gift that keeps on giving. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Captain Bubba. Thank you, Super Yacht CSS Platinum. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That were the famous last word of Simon McNasty. Yeah? <laughs> it is as do you really so can also AI also help us defend us from this attack there, uh, Charlotte? Is that possible? Yeah, absolutely. So um McNasty had a few options here. We've highlighted phishing. That was one way because we already had, you know, Henry Henry on the, the hook. Sorry for the pun. Um 
but it, it could have um, broken in through the, the Wi-Fi in the marina. Um, it could have used exploited a vulnerability in one of the systems that is internet facing. Um, if they weren't secured properly, if the, um, the firewall isn't configured properly, um, many options to, to get into the networks. So he just chose a, an easy route. Um, so uh, as I said, how would you know? How can you protect all of those things adequately so you could respond in real time? And this is what um, the immune system um, does. It, it watches, um, it, it looks for, uh, for anomalies. And then again, it responds autonomously um, and protects the systems from, so say if there was a ransomware attack that was born in that, that phishing email, and then it would have replicated to every single system on board, it would have identified it and stopped it and alerted you and said, you know, that this is happening. Um, so you could then deal with it um, at a later time, but it would have stopped all of the infection happening. So we, I think we got a demo of that as well, right? How that works within the with the web environment. Cameron, do you mind giving an intro? Uh, is there anything? It's an introduction that makes that's necessary for the for the audience to understand. The the demo is is is, rel is relatively high level. I think the the crucial thing is just understanding how the platform can can watch each step of the attack of what the attacker is trying to do, and because it's all centered around understanding what is normal we can then detect the abnormalities and we do that at each different step of the of the cyber attack. Can I can I add on oh no, just that, yes, you know what's really clever about this platform is it happens in the background. So, you know, people operating working on vessels supporting uh, vessels in, in the industry have got 101 things to do. Um, and and actually they can go about the job doing this feeling safe and secure in the knowledge that, you know, the artificial intelligence platform's got your back. Um, because we're infallible as human beings. We need to sleep, we need to eat, we make mistakes, mm -hmm. we switch off, we check our phones. We don't, this system doesn't blink at all. It's on 24 seven, always watching, always protecting. And, you know, that's a real piece of mind uh, here. You don't need to be some technical expert to absorb it. It's gonna tell you in plain English, this is happening, we've stopped it. And then you can you can manage the situation after the fact. And there's like, is that like, and I know people are going to ask this, does that like imply a new risk to us that we've got an AI system that basically looks into our world? We, we, we have been asked this, Cameron. I, I might let you answer it. <laughs> Is it does, the, does the platform provide a risk as dark trace risk for us, do you mean? Well, well not, not, not dark trace as, as, as you guys, because like uh, 50 mathematicians, PhDs, that sounds pretty interesting. But is it like, is that like the next step? So then we've got AI ruling our world. Eh? So, <laughs> um, I don't think it will ever fully take over. I think that the purpose of AI, at least in, in the dark trace case, is, is to do the hard work that the humans don't necessarily have time to do. So you can focus on your other core responsibilities. The artificial intelligence is there to do the heavy lifting. It's not there to essentially, yeah. well, it is there in certain areas to replace what a human would need to do, but it's it's there to assist you. It's, it's not there to. It's limited, I think, in the use cases that it works on. It works on algorithms that are looking for particular drivers. Um, so it's. I don't think it's going to go off and um, start um, impersonating you as a, as a human and, and body snatching and such. So. I, th I think, Arno, your, your point is, is is it going to look at somebody's data? Um, uh, and so it's, it's, it doesn't look at the data, it looks at the event, the activity. So it's, exactly. it's what it does, it's not the information that it contains. So, so I think that's the point you were getting at. Yeah, I think that's the point I'm getting at. Like we got a nice question from Kyle. So he's asking, and then we go into the demo, how long does the system take to learn everyone's normal behavior? It's a, it's a really good question. Um, the we can probably start giving results within 10 days. So traditionally when people trial the dark trace platform through what we call our proof of value is we would leave it for seven to 10 days to learn. And that's when it starts getting a really good understanding. It probably reaches full maturity, uh, maybe two months or so, depending on how many sort of different things happen within the pattern of life, say of the vessel within a period of time. But traditionally you get really accurate results within the first 10 days and then yeah. Going to see a level of protection. I'd, I'd say, yeah, in ten yeah. days, up, over a week, um, and it's it's really um, compared to any other technology, plug and play, essentially. Yeah. 
Good. We're going to look at it. Ladies and gentlemen watching us, this is also the last video. Afterwards, we're going to have gone to the panel. Any questions, put them in the chat. Um, we don't mind being challenged. So anything that you think, want to know, feel, have an opinion about, this is the moment to add them to the chat and we'll answer them afterwards and we'll have a little round table discussion before we end the session. Um, I'm going to mute myself again. Everybody, please do as well. And then we're going to look at the, the demo for Dark Trades. I will now show you the Enterprise Immune System and the Cyber AI Analyst. The Enterprise Immune System gives us full visibility of everything that's happening within the vessel, or in this case, fleet of vessels, networks. Each of these cubes represents a vessel and the more light coming from the vessel means the higher level of anomalies that we have spotted. The cyber AI analyst automatically investigates these anomalies and will tell you everything that's happened. We can click into an incident and see what is happening in this case in a ransomware attack. Within a ransomware attack, the ransomware tries to spread across all of the devices. So what the cyber AI analyst is able to do is show us who is patient zero, what file is being used to, for the ransomware to transport across the other devices. And finally, how is the ransomware communicating with the attacker? And we can see that the ransomware is connecting to this website to wait instructions from the attacker. The way the dark trace has detected this is we have never seen someone within the vessel's network connect to this domain before. Because we understand the normal pattern of life, we can spot the abnormality to detect the threat. Alongside this, we can also see all of the other devices that are infected and the cyber AI and this will recommend a course of action for you to take. Okay, so what have we seen today? So today we have seen an escalation of a cyber attack using different methods, social engineering, email high tech, diversion of funds, uh, I know we see that a lot in the industry. Then we moved on to the worst case scenario where a hacker having access to the owner data and for everybody, it doesn't matter what senior or what junior level you are, you can be a target. That's what I've learned from, from, from Mike and Charlotte and Cameron. It's really happening. So under the radar, I think we tried to do something different with the videos. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I know there's a few questions out there. Shall we go through them? Uh, Mike, Cameron, Paul, you ready for those? Average, we know crew, back it up. Uh, average crew turnover, Paul. How, what do you feel about that? Like it's, we got high crew turnover, obviously. Um, but like uh, how, uh, how does that affect, do you think, the security of the vessel in general? And then we'll move to cybersecurity with Charlotte and Mike. I think, the, I think the, the points about the dark trace platform on there and the, and the frequency of changeover. So I think it's maybe a, com a question to Cameron of how quickly will it take up new employees or new starters? I mean, it, it's really simple. You would essentially just tell the system there's a new employee and it would it would just add that to the list of of, um, of employees it recognises. The, the tool, it it's designed to really take if it does take an action, it's a really surgical action. So it doesn't just lock people out randomly unless something really significant is happening. It's a very proportionate response and you can let it know certain things if you need to. So with high turnover, it wouldn't be a problem at all. Okay. Yeah, I do that think that normal also relates to the real good turnover because the next question is what the risk from social media. I think it's like when you constantly have new crew on your vessels, so you constantly want to make sure they're up to speed and that they are, that they know what, what, what they need to do and not to do. I think that's part of the answer I would like to get as well, apart from how quickly crew turnover can be <laughs> fixed by the platform. We have... Um... I didn't want to interrupt too much, Paul, but I, we, we do have a use case where we um, are managing around a thousand crew for um, a maritime um, operation, a, a gas and oil company. Um, we monitor their crew as in with, with our crew check product where we, we monitor their, first we did initial background investigation, um, which looked at whether they, they have um, any criminal leanings or are operating on the dark web. We look at their, their, social, their um, social media footprint, digital footprint, and we basically then go on to monitor that um, and onboard 
um, new crew and offboard them as as they they go. And we also do training, um, and again we have a digital platform where people new people just go through it. But um, Paul, if you want to go and, and talk about what that looks like more in the in the yacht space, that'd be great. Well, you know the thing that's occurring to me at this moment, Charlotte, is that. We're no longer pirates. We're no longer cowboys. We're no longer, you know, the, the marine industry for the longest time has been this quaint little cottage industry. Uh, and up until just a few years ago, uh, I mean, if you think about the, for the amount of time that we've been sailing around the world in boats versus the amount of time that we've had very wealthy individuals wanting to have their privacy and their security and their pleasure time uh, on board boats, and expecting a very, very high level of service, and now expecting also a very high level of security in a very, very short period of time. And we, we in the industry have had to work very hard to rise to a level of professionalism. You know, even when I started in the business working on boats in the 19, late 1970s and 1980s, you know, we were kind of pirates, you know, it, it was a place to go escape real life and you had a ton of fun. You traveled around. You never wore shoes. You know, oh, pants. I don't have any of those. If I need those, I get a different job and go someplace where the sun is shining. It's a different yeah. world today. Um, we have we have uh, uh, very sophisticated pieces of equipment. We travel to very remote places. We have people like Cyber McNasty hiding behind every piling, every bush, every piece of coral, every piece of sand. And we need to realize that as an industry and we need to conduct ourselves accordingly. I don't know that that specifically answers your question, Charlotte, but it, it's just the thing that, that is really resonating in my mind right now about where we have been in this industry and where, we're, where we need to be today and where we're going. You, know, you look at the hotel industry, which has provided a very high level of service ahead of us. Yeah, and that's something to model our, ourselves on. And crew t turnover is is worrying. You know, it does happen seasonally. You do have people picking them up, dr dropping off, and 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 actually, by by the nature of what they do, they can be transient. If you did a criminal background check, it might not even turn up anything because they've not been to the home country for such a long time. So you need something above and beyond that to um, to understand who you're employing and, and what risk they pose to you as an organisation and to your clients. And I, I would add to that that, do you know what? Yeah, yes, it would be busy. Yes, it could be a nightmare. But what's the alternative? To, to not do that? It's better that you know that there's something there. And, it, and again, it's just becomes a system and process that over time, businesses, vessels, et cetera, the industry just needs to adopt because, you know, if we're not protecting against this, there are cyber criminals on the other side that will be looking to exploit this. You know, so it's this cat and mouse game. It's this poacher gamekeeper game that this is long as time, it's, you know, and it's one of those things that just needs to evolve. And, and, and Dark Trace is, is one of those ways with that or crew check in terms of background checking that helps to narrow down and provide that protection. Well, it's our responsibility. It's, 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 not, it's, not just, it's not okay just to know how to drive a boat, just to know how to make flaming crepe Suzettes. No, it's not okay to just have a minimal skill set. It's a profession and you need to respond and act accordingly. I love that. And I'm going to take over now because we're, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. I've got a few more questions. I'm going to ask you guys to answer shortly if possible. Is that okay? Because this is a topic and we'll do, uh, I think, um, Mike, we can agree, we'll do another one on Saturday with Nasi, right? To do some more scenarios and future webinars and go deeper and deeper. And I hope Captain Bubba will reappear as well. Maybe Captain Bubba, maybe you can then hunt it down Saturday with Nasi and get your money back. How do you feel about that? Um, that could be a great question. That sounds like a capital idea. That sounds like a capital idea. Good. Quick question. I think it's for you, Cameron. It's a totally passive the system. Does it store data? And if it stores data, who owns the data? On mute, Cameron, I think. Thanks. Um, it's a good question. So the, the dark trace data is stored on an appliance which would be on the on the vessel. So it would never leave the vessel. You own the data as well. So we don't own the data. We just essentially analyze it. Um, and a better data level so you don't actually see what's in the core of anything. It's just at the, the top slice, which is exactly un right. not understandable to a human. 
Yeah. Okay. So, we'll so there's, not, there's, there's no personal data store, just to put it in simple language that we all understand. Exactly. And just, just real quick, you know, it's not just for, for the yachts, the vessel. This would go in a, a company, an organizational network, any, and you know, anyone, yeah. any place. Fantastic. You own the data. You own yeah. the data. Other question, does it also protect crew devices when they're using the vessel's networks? Yes, yeah, so it's a good question. There's a couple of these that are sort of along the same lines. So with regards to crews, if it's like a, a crew member device that's owned by the ship, that could be then incorporated into the Dark, Dark Trace platform. With things like BYUD devices, I see from Richard's quest, question, and that sort of links with, I think it was Kyle's question with regards to guests coming onto the ship. If it's a personal device and something bad happens to the device, as to the personal device, as the the vessel or the company, you're not necessarily too concerned about that. What you're concerned about is that malware then getting into your network onto the onto the vessel. Well, and that's also, the yeah, also on using that device to steal data, right? So if that person happens to be, you know, some entertainer or some person who's coming in for the day, start using their device to, to steal data from the network, same scenario. Yeah. Exactly. I think what I'm least, what I'm hearing is it's not about it does it protect the devices. No, it's more like does it allow the devices to be used to to be a part of a malware attack. I think that's more the question we need to ask ourselves, correct? Yeah. So essentially what Dark Trace would do in terms of say a, a personal device, because you wouldn't have Dark Trace installed on a crew member's personal phone, because that'd be like GDPR, mm -hmm. it's not it's not to cruise your, your data. But what Dark Trace would do is would stop whenever that device went into the network and made the network do something unusual, try and take data from the network, Dark Trace would stop that from happening. So they wouldn't be able to do anything from the network, even if it's coming from their personal device, if that makes okay. sense. I think the most important question, and it's not the last one, the most important one is the question everybody on the boat asks, does it affect the internet users and bandwidth of the guests? <laughs> No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, I mean, it's it's the key question of everything. Is, yeah. Because if it does, it's a no-go, right? Right, Paul? Nothing can interfere with the guest experience. Absolutely. And and if you, for example, there'll be hedge funds who have millions of dollars, millions of pounds that in that hinge on making a trade in a split second. Yeah. Use dark trace and it doesn't affect the, the, their, their internet speed at all. Okay. And there's a big question from Leslie saying like, how much of a personal digital footprint can you reach? Are there any limitations? How far does it go? Is it just a major change? Does it do, consider the, those used across different different locations and different cultures? Like a big question. And, but I think my girlfriend. Oh, God, hey, so what, Leslie, what, I, what I'd say here is um, any data, piece of data is usable. Uh, and don't think that a cyber criminal is going to gather all the data that they need from one location. Again, they're building target packs, particularly if they're highly attractive and highly valuable targets like a super yacht. They will gather information from lots of different places using lots of different techniques, maybe in person, maybe on open source on the Internet, maybe going onto the dark web and buying information, listening, breaches, you name it. And they'll fuse that information together. They then have intelligence. And from intelligence, you can start to actively target opportunities. So there are no limits. They, they will take all the information they can because, do you know what? It's like putting together a jigsaw. That one piece just might be the critical piece of the puzzle that unlocks the opportunity that gives the payday. So it's, you know, it's, and a lot of the time, it won't be the individual's fault if the data's gone. It could be from third-party companies that you've signed up for, for, you know, enjoyment or fun or buying things, they might have lost your data. And so it's not your fault. So any data could be gathered or used if it's out there in open source and unfortunately used against you. And so that's what we look at as an organization. So we, we, we have the same limitations that um, a hacker would do essentially. So um, we use the same tools and methodology to, to achieve the same goals and present that risk to a, an organization or an employer. And, I'm moving looks like the, sorry, Mike, go for it. I was going to, just going to say, and I know we're pushing for time. So the, one other thing I'd, I'd, I'd love the audience to understand is a cyber attack is not the end state. It's not the end goal. The cyber attack is a tool. It's a metaphoric crowbar or a metaphoric digital rock for a window. A cyber attack enables the criminal to do something. And it might be that they can do something immediately, or it might be that this is part of a multi-step strategy that they're looking to do something a long way down the line. And there are numerous just like in project management, there are numerous milestones they need to achieve in order to unlock the payday. 
And the payday could be any number of things, as, as, as Charlotte and, and Cameron and the rest of the team have alluded to. So just, just understand that it, it, it's literally a tool and it's one of those things that, you know, uh, that they do for the payday. So there's always a reason behind it. The other thing I would say is, is when you're considering this, think about this in a really simple way. And this is what we try to do at CSS is to say, look, if you govern the process, if you come up with a plan about how you're going to approach the risks that you face from a data protection or cybersecurity perspective, and you, you think about them, you document and you rehearse them, one, you're hitting your compliance and regulatory requirements, but two, you have a plan to follow in case something goes wrong and you know what to do. People know what's expected of them. Next, you need to protect your people because people are your greatest vulnerability. And if a cyber hacker can't get into the yacht's infrastructure, it will go to the next closest thing. That could be the broker that's selling the yacht. That could be the crew member who's a little bit lackadaisical on social media. Could be the yacht management company. Could be the fueling company. Could be your lawyer. Could be your accountant. They were very innovative. And again, it's back to Leslie's questions about gathering that detail from many different places. And I'll pull that all together so that they can do it. So understanding people and training them. And the other point I say is the technology. If you consider technology in this day and age, we, we hear about anti-malware. We've got it on our laptops. It's not good enough. Because artificial intelligence, criminals will use artificial intelligence bots to target us. They don't sleep. The only way you can fight artificial intelligence is with artificial intelligence. And that's where, you know, that's the way that the, um, the industry is evolving. Um, so just a couple of points there just to consider, you know, uh, as we sort of draw this to a close. Good. I'm going to do quick rounds uh, for some final words, and then uh, we're going to round this up. Um, Cameron, thank you for being here. Anything you would like to add uh, shortly? Um, I suppose I think the thing with Dark Chase and, it, and Kyle's question um, sort of I think highlights this point quite well is, is the whole point of the tool is, is to be designed to take care of it for you. So you won't need additional training. You don't need a member of staff to sit there and watch Dark Chase and make sure it's doing everything it should be. Dark Trace does it all itself and you can essentially get on with running what you would traditionally do, but know that you are safe from a cyber attack because of Dark Trace there in the background. Thank you. Paul, Captain Baba, any, any famous last words? I'm just really thrilled to know that Dark Trace won't prevent me from doing any multi-billion dollar hedge fund trades because um, <laughs> that's the next thing for Captain Bubba, I'm sure. And we definitely don't want to get in the way of that. So no, I think it's, I, I think it's been particularly informative um, and, and I appreciate y'all inviting me on here because I think some of my questions come from more of the layman's perspective. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's important for the audience. Fantastic. My dear co-host Charlotte, <laughs> what, would you, what would you like to say? No, I, I just, you know, thank you for, I suppose, the opportunity to, to bring the presentation um, to you. And I, I hope we've hit the mark on making this. Um, I suppose accessible, understandable, um, and that there's a little bit more understanding about a cyber attack in general and the mind of the hacker or nasty. Yeah, well, as Norma Tree said in the chat, the 100% yard crew requirement, that's why we've decided to include this in ACO Plus, like the, the solution that you have for longevity on board. And uh, crew check can be part of that. So just like, um, just ask us, ask Charlotte, ask Mike, we're all here to help you. And uh, we're getting a lot of lovely comments saying how great it was, how fantastic it was. People are asking about ballpark number, how much dark days will cost. We're not going into that now, but I'm very sure that um, you, that you will get, we'll send you an email all that have been here with the final link, et cetera. So that's great. Thank you as well. Mike, you can round this up, please. Very kind, Anna. Thank you. Hey, to everyone that's joined us, we're, we're really grateful for your time. We realize how busy people are and how precious time can be. Um, particularly midweek as well. So thank you so much for joining us. We do want to help. We do want to make the industry a safer place. So as Honor has said, if anyone else here uh, would like to speak to us, we're, we're all available to chat with you. And Honor in particular, thank you uh, for acting uh, as the host and, and, and helping facilitate this. And same to you, Paul, and, and, and to Cameron. And I have to hey, because I would want to, Charlotte as well, thank you very much. So to everyone, really, really grateful. And um, hopefully we'll speak with you soon. Yeah. Uh, that is the famous last word. Thank you so much, Mike. Bye bye, everybody. I'm going to count down 10 seconds because that's your delay. And in 10 seconds, I'm going to like cut the, the broadcast. Thank you, everybody. And uh, see you soon. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 
two, one, countdown. Bye bye.